who's excited for the Samsung Galaxy S8. Yeah, the Samsung Galaxy S8 is almost here. It's actually coming tomorrow. So yeah, tomorrow, March the 29th, is the day when Samsung will officially unveil the Samsung Galaxy S8. So just one more day until this thing is official. And as it's been my tradition for the past four years now, it's time for another Final Leaks and Rumors episode, this time covering the Samsung Galaxy S8. So in this video, I'll be covering everything from the design, the display, specs, special features, release date, price, colors, battery life software, pretty much everything you need to know in terms of the Samsung Galaxy S8 is covered in depth in this video. Now I'll try and make this video as brief and as short as I can because I've already done a final design and a final specs and features video and those videos are almost 30 minutes long each so that would mean that this video should be at least two hours long if not more which hopefully is not going to be the case but yeah regardless this is going to be a long and in-depth video so grab your popcorn and yeah enjoy. So starting off with section number one, we have the design. So you've probably seen how the S8 looks like already. And yeah, the design is the biggest change when it comes to the Samsung Galaxy S8. So we've had a ton of hands-on images and even hands-on videos all showing this exact same design for the Samsung Galaxy S8. So the S8 has almost no bezels at all. This thing simply looks insane. In my opinion, this is the best looking phone of all time. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about the S8's design, but I simply think that this thing looks amazing. Now the home button, the multitasking, and the back button have been removed. So they're now on-screen buttons like on so many Android smartphones. However, a difference would be that they're now transparent instead of having a black bar like you would do on something like the Google Pixel. So this is really good news actually because this means that the on-screen buttons won't actually interfere with the visual content which is awesome. So the Samsung Galaxy S8 comes with the biggest design change since well since the original Samsung Galaxy S1 and also if you compare all of those smartphones that we have on the market right now the Google Pixel, the iPhone 7, all of those phones look look really old when compared to the Samsung Galaxy S8. This thing looks really, really futuristic with those really thin bezels. There are only two phones on the market right now which can actually compare to the Galaxy S8. One of them would be the LG G6, and then the other one would be the Xiaomi Mi Mix. But regardless, at least in my opinion, the Samsung Galaxy S8 definitely looks the best, especially with those curved edges. Now, also when it comes to the design of the S8, the second biggest change, apart from those really thin bezels, is the actual size of these phones. So the official dimensions for the S8 and the S8 Plus have been leaked. And the Samsung Galaxy S8 comes with a massive 5.8 inches display versus the 5.1 inch display that the S7 came with and then the S8 Plus comes with an even bigger 6.2 inches display versus the 5.5 inches display that the S7 Edge came with. So this is a massive screen size increase. I mean even the regular S8 has a larger display than even the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. Yeah and if you take a look at the actual sizes you can see that they're almost the same size, almost as the S7 and the S7 Edge. They're both taller, but not by that much. If you take a look at the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, this one is almost the same size, actually even smaller than the iPhone 7 Plus. However, it comes with a massive 6.2 inches display versus the 5.5 inch display that the iPhone 7 Plus comes with. Speaking of the display, apart from that massive screen size increase, we are also getting some other kind of improvements as well. So first off, the resolution of the display is getting some improvements. Now, unfortunately, it's not going to be a 4K display or even a Quad HD Plus display like we've seen in uh, EvoLeaks leaks in the official spec sheet. Here we can see that the display is going to be Quad HD Plus. Now, it seems that Samsung, when they said Quad HD Plus, they didn't actually mean the standard Quad HD Plus, which would be 3200 by 1800. Instead, they actually meant something higher than Quad HD. So in this case, the S8 will come with a resolution of 2960 by 1440. So yeah, this would be an 18 by 9 aspect ratio uh, compared to 16 by 9 what we had before. So it's going to be much wider and uh, much taller than before. So yeah, you will be able to take 18 by 9 photos. However, if you plan on watching 18 by 9 videos, there aren't that many videos uh, that are 18 by 9. So you'll actually have a couple of, well, two black bars on the right and left side of the device. Now, speaking of interesting things regarding the S8, another interesting one is the edges of the display or actually the corners. So the corners of the display on the S8 are actually going to be rounded. This would be really similar to what we have on the LG G6 for example. Now in my opinion the reason, the main reason why Samsung decided to go with those rounded edges is because of drop resistance. So if you take a look at race cars, if you take a look at airplanes, uh, most windshields of airplanes, helicopters and so on, they all have curved uh, rounded edges basically. And that's because if you have a sheet of glass with rounded edges, the pressure, so to say, is is more evenly distributed uh, throughout the, the whole surface of the glass. 
So yeah, it's basically more durable when it comes to impact or dropping it. And speaking of dropping it, the S8 is also coming with Gorilla Glass 5. So just like we had on the Note 7, and according to Corning, Gorilla Glass 5 can actually withstand drops up to 1.6 meters on concrete, which is really, really impressive. Now, in my final specs and features video, I said that one possibility for the display of the S8 is that Samsung will most likely switch to an RGB matrix from a Pentel matrix. So having an RGB matrix actually means that you have more uh, more reds and more blue subpixels. So uh, basically the VR, the image in VR will be much sharper than on Yes 7 and Yes 7 h Now, even though this hasn't been confirmed, it is still a possibility. So if this happens, then uh, the S8 and Yes 8 Plus will be much better in VR than Yes 7 and Yes 7 h And speaking of VR, the PPI is actually going to be decreased, unfortunately, from Yes 7 and the S7 Edge. So if you care a lot about VR, hopefully Samsung switches to an RGB matrix, but if they don't, then the S the S8 will be a much better choice for VR than the S8 Plus. Well, actually, the S7 is an even better choice for VR um, than the S8. Now, also in terms of the display, there's going to be a few more changes, a few more updates when it comes to the actual colors. So unfortunately, it's not going to be a 10-bit display, even though the Snapdragon 835 does support 10-bit panels, it's not going to come with a 10-bit panel, only an 8-bit panel. So 8-bit is basically 16 million colors, 10-bit uh, is more than a billion. Yeah, this is still going to be an 8-bit panel. However, the big change is going to be that this is going to be a DCI-P3 display. So uh, just like we have on the iPhone 7, on the 5K Retina iMac, on the new MacBook Pros, a DCI-P3 display does have a much wider color gamut than the standard sRGB display. So yeah, it will be able to show more reds and also more blues. Finally, something about a display that I forgot to mention uh, is that it's going to be curved on both the S8 and the S8 Plus, so no more flat version of the S8 this year. And I'm really hoping that the accidental touch rejection is much better than on the S7 Edge, because on the S7 Edge, at least at least at launch, it was really bad. So I'm really hoping that, some, that Samsung improves on the accidental touch rejection. Now, moving on to section number three, we have the specs. So in terms of the RAM, we are going to get four gigabytes both the S8 and the S8 Plus. So this is confirmed 4 gigabytes for the international version of the S8 and the S8 Plus. Now there is going to be a, an Asian market version which is going to get 6 gigabytes of RAM. So this would be for both the S8 and the S8 Plus. This will only be for the Asian market, by the way. Now when it comes to the CPU, we have two options. So the first one is the Snapdragon 835. So every single Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus sold in the US will come with the Snapdragon 835. And then for the uh, for the international market and the Asian market, we will get the Exynos 8895, which is a custom chip made by uh, made by Samsung. And those two processors, the Snapdragon 835 and the Exynos 8895, are really really similar. So they're both based on a 10 nanometer process, a smaller process which is about 10% smaller than uh, the power consumption is about 40% lower than on the previous generation models, and then the performance is about 35 to 40% better than the previous generation. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I've already covered these in depth in my final specs and features video. So here are all the specs, all the clock speeds of those two CPUs. Now, one thing to point out is that the Geekbench score uh, for the Exynos 8895 has actually been leaked. So here's the Geekbench score for the Exynos 8895, 2301 for the single core score and the 1719 for the multi-core one. So really, really impressive when it comes to multi-core. However, when it comes to single core, it's actually far behind even, even the iPhone 7, well, the iPhone 7, which comes with uh, 3448 and then 5609 for the multi-core. So yeah, overall, not a significant difference from the S7 and the S7 Edge. So both CPUs are really, really similar when it comes to the performance. Overall, I would say that the Exynos 8895 is a better choice since it's made by Samsung. And we actually, we've seen the same thing in the Exynos 8890. So, uh, the international version of the S8 was actually faster, slightly a bit faster, and also the battery life was better than on the ones equipped with the Snapdragon 820. So that was the case with the S7, and I'm guessing that this is still going to be the case with the S8. So the Exynos 8895, much better optimized for the S8 than the Snapdragon model. Now, when it comes to the GPU, we basically have two options. So if you have the Snapdragon version of the S8, then you would get the Adreno 540. And then if you have the Exynos version of the S8, you will get the Mali, the Mali uh, G71 chip. So same as with the CPUs, the GPUs are also really similar. Now, there are a couple of differences, some big differences between those two. So for example, one of them would be that the Adreno 540 actually supports 10-bit display panels and also Rec 2020, so up to over a billion colors on the Adreno 540. But then again, the display on the S8 is not going to be 10-bit uh, and we actually have no Rec 2020 displays on the market right now. So it's kind of useless for the S8. And then if you take a look at uh, the Mali G71, this one actually supports resolution up to 4K DCI, which again, the S8 won't come with, but maybe, just maybe, 
the Note 8 will come with such resolution. This would be that would be amazing, especially uh, for VR. So this was pretty much everything in terms of the specs. So moving on, section number four, we have the camera. So in terms of the camera, the first thing that I want to mention is that there's no dual camera module coming to the S8. This was actually rumored back in December, and I've actually talked about this in my first leaks and rumors episode of the S on the S8. But yeah, fortunately, there's no dual camera module coming to the S8 or even the S8 Plus. So it's still going to be a single camera module. It's also going to come with 12 megapixels, so exactly the same resolution as we've had on uh, on the S7 and the S7 Edge and the Note 7. And then the aperture is going to be f1.7, so again, the same as with the S7 and the S7 Edge and the Note 7. Okay, so any improvements in terms of the camera then? Well, uh, probably the main improvement is going to be a new ISP or a new image signal processor. This is something that's supported by both the Snapdragon 835 and the Exynos 8095. Okay, so what does this mean, an ISP, an image signal processor? Well, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but basically when you take a photo, that photo is taken in RAW formats and the image, the image signal processor basically processes that image. So it sharpens the image, it reduces its size, it compresses the image, it converts it into something like a JPEG image, a PNG image, and so on. So from the S8's new ISP, do you expect to see some better low light performance? So basically a better noise reduction and also hopefully some uh, some less sharpening because the S7 was really known, actually all Samsung phones are really known to, uh, to both increase the vibrance in the photos and also increase the sharpening, which in some cases make the photos look really unrealistic. Now, a possible improvement when it comes to the camera would be a larger sensor area. So this is something that Samsung might improve on the S8. Again, this is not confirmed, but it might happen. I don't, I, I don't personally think it will happen just because the S8 does come with a brand new design. So they already had to redesign the space inside. So I don't, I don't see Samsung working on a larger sensor for the S8. So this is just my prediction that the sensor size will stay the same as with the S7 and the S7 Edge. But in case the sensor is going to be improved, in that case, the S8 will be much better in low light. Now, something interesting about Sony. So Sony has recently released uh, in 2017 a new camera module that allows you to record slow motion in up to 1000 frames per second. So that's insane. The smartphone camera capable of recording 1000 frames per second, by the way, in 720p. Now, there have been some rumors suggesting that Samsung will include this camera in the S8 Although I don't, I don't think so because this is a pretty new camera module. So maybe in the S9 and maybe in the new iPhones, not the iPhone 8, but the, the next year's iPhone. However, we might just get some improved frame rates when it comes to recording videos. So 4K at 60 frames per second is really, really possible to happen, really likely to happen. And then also 1080p at 120 frames per second, and then maybe 720 at more than 240. Now, when it comes to the front-facing camera, it's still going to be an f1.7 aperture, so the same aperture, the same low-light performance as on the S7 and the S7 Edge. The only major improvement, so to say, that we are going to get is in terms of the resolution. So the resolution is going to be increased from 7 megapixels, actually from 5 megapixels to 8 megapixels. So yeah, that's that's a pretty decent improvement. Other than that no improvements to the front-facing camera. Then moving on to section number five, we have special features. So the S8 is going to come with quite a few new features and here is all of them. So with the S8, we are going to get new headphones in the box. So as you can see from the from the official spec sheet posted by EveLeaks, the S8 and the S8 Plus are going to come with AKG tuned headphones. Now AKG was actually purchased by Harman last year and don't get me wrong, uh, those headphones are not going to be some amazing headphones. They're just going to, they're still going to be made by Samsung. They're only going to be tuned uh, by AKG, so the sound quality is going to be slightly improved, but don't expect some amazing sounding speakers. Headphones, not speakers. Yeah, the headphones that came with the S7 and the S7 Edge, they weren't that amazing, so expect some improvement over those. Also, fun fact, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S3, you've probably heard of it, it was announced at this year's MWC. Uh, the Tab S3 also comes with speakers, obviously, uh, AKG tuned speakers, so four speakers tuned by AKG, so that's the first place where you can see the partnership between AKG and Samsung. Now the second big feature, and this is one of the biggest features of the S8, is going to be the voice assistant. So I've talked about this before, the new Bixby voice assistant. So this is a new voice assistant made by Samsung, which Samsung will actually include in their smart TVs uh, for this year, and even fridges. So yeah, they're going to use this throughout their entire range of products. So yeah, Bixby will essentially be a competitor to Google Assistant and Siri. So it will also be contextual aware. So this means that you can actually have conversations with this thing instead of like we like you have to do with Siri. With Siri, you have to ask Siri a question. And then if you ask, if you want to ask her, like, what's the weather in a different city, you'll have to ask the question all over again, unlike Google Assistant, for example. Oh, and something interesting about the S8, the S8 also comes with an extra button on the side. So you have two volume buttons, you have a power button, 
and then you also have an extra button on the left hand side. So apparently this will be used to activate the voice assistant Bixby and also to activate some sort of app capable of uh, capable of AR. I'm guessing that that button will be able to be customized so that you will be able to launch the camera by simply uh, pressing that button as well. Now another new feature is going to be USB Type-C. So yeah, USB Type-C is finally coming to the Galaxy S lineup. We've had this with the Note 7. However, one big difference is that USB-C, the Type-C, uh, on the S8 and the S8 Plus will actually support the USB 3.1 standard. So what does this mean? Well, it also means faster transfer speeds, but the main reason why this is going to be USB 3.1 uh, is that it will also support uh, HDMI 2.0. So the S8 will actually come with a dock. You, you can buy a separate dock called the Dock DX. The manual, by the way, for this was actually leaked. So yeah, this is another new feature of the S8, this DX dock. Uh, and with that dock, you can actually connect the S8 to your TV. Uh, and it will apparently be able to support up to 4K, up to 60 Hertz, which is really, really impressive coming from, uh, coming from a smartphone. So yeah, you will be able to play Android games. You will be able to watch Netflix and basically turn your dumb TV into a smart TV using your S8 and the DX dock. So what do you guys think about the DX dock? Do you think it's something that you will be buying or not? I, I don't think it's that interesting. It, it's cool, but again, if you have a smart TV, then it also supports uh, Netflix and all of those apps and even games. So it depends on what kind of TV you have. Other than that, we are also going to get faster LTE. So the Exynos 8095 actually supports LTE speeds up to one gigabit per second, not gigabyte, but gigabit which is really impressive considering that this is a mobile phone and these would be the speeds for uh, an LTE network. So really impressive. This is not 5G, by the way. 5G would be five gigabits per second, but still it's really, really fast. So uh, yeah, you are going to get some improvements at least when it comes to the Exynos 8095 models. Then the iris scanner is also making a return from the Note 7. So the iris scanner is coming back to the Samsung Galaxy S8. So this is going to be a slightly improved version uh, than the one we've seen on the Note 7. So it's going to be slightly faster and also more precise and also more secure than the Note 7 one. And same as with the Note 7, this is going to work in complete darkness because it's it's going to be an infrared sensor. Uh, so even if you have no light at all, it will still be able to recognize your uh, your iris. And speaking of unlocking the phone, in case you're wondering where that fingerprint reader is, it's actually on the back. So yeah, the fingerprint reader has been moved from the front to the back, which is a bit disappointing because Samsung did have a lot of patents showing, uh, showing a fingerprint reader built into the display assembly. But unfortunately, that never ended happening. So a fingerprint reader on the back is what we will get with the with the S8. And yeah, as you can see, it's not positioned in middle. Instead, it's actually positioned to the right hand side of the device, at least if you look at it from the back. Now, besides these features, we're also going to get a Taptic engine inside the S8. So this is similar to what we have on the iPhone 7. So when you press the home button, the back button or the multitasking button, this will give you a unique vibration. This would be different from the vibration motor, by the way, that's inside the phone. And I'm guessing that this will be used throughout the UI as well, just like on the iPhone 7, on the iPhone, if you're in the alarm, for example, you can actually feel uh, the scroll wheel and effects and messages, fireworks and more. And yeah, apart from this, everything that we've had on the S7 and the S7 Edge is still going to be here. So IP68 water resistance, uh, wireless charging is also going to be here. And unfortunately, no IR blaster. A lot of you have actually asked me in the previous videos if the S8 is going to come with an IR blaster. And unfortunately, it's not. So yeah, this is one major missing feature of the S8. MicroSD card support is still going to be here and so is the headphone jack. So yeah, the headphone jack is not going away. Moving on to section number six, we have the software. So uh, TouchWiz is going to be replaced with Grace UX. So this is something that we've seen introduced on the Note 7. Grace UX is basically still TouchWiz with a different name and slightly re redesigned. The official launcher for the S8, by the way, was actually leaked by Techno Buffalo. So this is how it looks like it's actually really modern and really simplistic looking compared to even even the Note 7. But other than that, it's still going to be TouchWiz, but with a different name. Hopefully the accidental touch rejection is improved and also the RAM management because yeah, it only comes with four gigabytes of RAM. In case you've seen my ultimate speed test comparisons in those videos, I compared uh, the iPhone 6s, for example, and the iPhone 7, which come with two gigabytes of RAM versus the S7 Edge, which comes with four and the OnePlus 2, which also comes with four. And those two phones, the iPhones with only two gigabytes managed to heavily outperform uh, the S7 and uh, the OnePlus 2. RAM management was never one of Samsung's strengths, so really hope that this is improved with the S8. Other than that, the S8 is going to come with Android 7.1.1 out of the box. Next up, number seven, in terms of the battery life, unfortunately, we're not getting any improvements. So the S8 is still going to come with the 3000 mAh battery, the same battery size, at least, uh, as in the S7. And then the S8 Plus is going to come with a 3500 mAh battery, actually smaller than the 3600 mAh battery that we had 
on, uh, on the S7 Edge. Now the CPU in those two phones is more efficient, both the Snapdragon 835 and the Exynos ADN95. It's about 40% more power efficient, which is also good, but then the display size is much larger, so you have more pixels to push, more pixels to, more pixels to light up. So overall, I don't think the battery life is going to be even as good as on the S7 and the S7 Edge. So I think the battery life overall is going to be getting a downgrade. Moving on to section number eight, we have the release date. So the announcement, the official announcement is actually happening tomorrow. So that's March the 29th, 2017, if you're watching this video in, in the future. But yeah, I'll have a coverage video of the event tomorrow. So definitely subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And if you wanna see my coverage of the official Samsung Galaxy S8 launch event tomorrow. And then when it comes to when you will be able to find this thing in stores, that's going to be in April. So it's going to launch officially on April the 21st and some rumors pointed uh, to an April 28th launch. So it's definitely going to be between April 21st and April uh, 28th, 2017, in case you're wondering. Moving on to section number nine, we have the models and the color options. So when it comes to the models, the storage, the baseline model is going to be 64 gigabytes, which is a pretty big improvement over the S7 and the S7 Edge, which uh, came with 32 gigabytes as the baseline model. And then the iPhone 7 was finally upgraded to 32 in 2016. So 64 as the baseline model is huge. So this is for both the S8 and the S8 Plus. And then if you wish, you can expand that even further with the micro SD card support. So you have a micro SD card slot and you can uh, you can buy, for example, a 256 gigabyte card and expand that storage even further. But do keep in mind that the internal storage is much faster than the external ones. So if you plan on storing, I don't know, apps, games, uh, videos that are going to load much faster from the internal storage. Now, when it comes to color options, we have quite a lot of color options that have been leaked for the S8. So the one that's been leaked the most is jet black. So this means black on both the front and the back, and then the borders, the edges of the S8 are made out of this shiny, glossy black aluminum. So this one looks really, really nice, even though it's, it's basically a smudge magnet. But then we've also had some other leaks showing a white Samsung Galaxy S8, a golden Samsung Galaxy S8, which we even saw, which we even seen in a video. Then we've also seen a pink one, a blue one, and a couple of uh, and a couple of leaked photos, and even a silver one. Now, according to Evan Blast, also known as Eve Leaks, he posted the official colors of the S8. And according to Evan Blast, the story of the colors is a tiny bit different. So this is Evan's post. And according to him, Black Sky is going to be basically the name for the jet black color option. Then we're also going to get an orchid gray color, which basically comes with still a black front. However, the sides and also the back are made out of this gray slash pink color. And then we also have the Arctic silver, which again still has a black front. And then the edges and the back have the silver color, basically the same color as we've seen on the S7 and the S7 Edge. Now, I personally do not see Samsung removing all the front panel color options except for the black one. So I do think that a gold front, a white front, and maybe even a blue front are possible. When well, speaking of the blue Samsung Galaxy S8, we've actually had quite a few leaks showing a blue Samsung Galaxy S8, but again, only uh, only the sides and the back. At least these ones are supposedly official, so the ones that show the front might be fake. But yeah, judging from Evan Blass's track record, these are definitely the colors that we are going to see, and then maybe the ones with a front uh, with a white, gold, and blue front are also going to be maybe some options, some other options as well. But these options, these three ones are basically confirmed, so to say. And finally, moving on to section number 10, we have the price. So we already knew that the Samsung Galaxy S8 was going to be more expensive than the S7 and the S7 Edge, but how, how much more expensive is it actually going to be? Well, Evan Blast has also leaked the pricing for the S8, and at least in Europe, it's actually 100, 100 euros more expensive than, uh, than the S7 and the S7 Edge. Now, in the UK, this would be about 70 to 80 pounds more expensive than the S7 and the S7 Edge, uh, which is a pretty decent price increase. Now, the good news, however, is that you are getting 64 gigabytes as the baseline model, and then you also get a pretty massive screen size increase. Now, in the end, the S8 is more similar to the S7 Edge than the S7, just because of that larger display size. So I would suggest getting the S8 because in the end, that's even better in VR. Uh, than the S8 Plus since it has a much higher PPI. But yeah, again, if you care about a PPI, then the S7 is an even better option than, uh, than the S8. But there you go, this was everything in terms of the Samsung Galaxy S8. So feel free to subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more videos like this one, more Leaks and Rumors episodes, and also more videos covering the S8, I'll have more videos covering the S8 soon, uh, as soon as it's released. And also, a, an in-depth coverage of the event tomorrow. So definitely stay tuned for that. Also, in case you're curious to see my previous Final Leaks and Rumors episodes on the iPhone 7, uh, the iPhone 6, the iPhone 6S, the Samsung Galaxy S7, and the S6, feel free to check those out. I left the link for these in the description and you can see uh, how much I got right 
and how much I got wrong. And if you want to know more details about the Samsung Galaxy S8, again, this was more of like a recap video of all of my previous videos. Uh, but if you want to know everything more in depth, I've left a couple of videos, hands on, uh, all the hands on leaks we've had over the past few weeks. And final specs and final features, again, everything more in depth in separate videos in case you want to learn more about the Samsung Galaxy S8 at uh, tomorrow's event. Don't forget to enable notifications on my channel on both desktop and mobile by simply clicking on the bell icon next to my channel so that you're notified as soon as I upload a brand new epic video. Let me know in the comments what feature of the Samsung Galaxy S8 are you most excited for. For me personally, that would be the new design, the larger display. Other than that, I think it's a pretty, I think it's a pretty interesting phone. I don't, I honestly don't think it's worth upgrading from an S7 and an S7 Edge, but if you have like something like an S6 or even an S5, definitely upgrades. Other than that, the design is cool, but I don't think the design is a must upgrade, a must feature, a feature that's, you know what I mean. The design is the main chain, so I don't think it's actually worth upgrading just for that. Feel free to give this video a like if you have enjoyed it, to let me know, it took a really long time to make, so every single feedback is really appreciated. And also let me know in the comments, what's, what feature are you most excited for when it comes to the Samsung Galaxy S8? For me personally, it's definitely the new design. The fact that this thing has a huge display and basically the same form factor, almost the same form factor as last year's phones. That's really, really impressive. Also let me know in the comments if you were epic enough to make it until the end of this video by saying I was epic enough to make it until the end. But yeah, other than that, this was pretty much it. So thank you for watching. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in my next one. Zenoftech, signing out. Cheers.